Okay, you guys, the time is here. The time has come. The time is now to learn some cool stuff that we're here willing to show you guys. This is gonna be a tutorial on how to hide a magnet within your little chibi, and it's for beginners. If you are a seasoned 3D printer, you are a wizard engineer, you are just a my magical unicorn clients, you know, you guys, obviously, this doesn't pertain to you. However, if you guys were to watch until the end, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, of course. Comment to engage with the community. That actually helps my channel get seen to other creators and it really does help and we truly appreciate you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss the topic of this video, which is why you clicked on it. We're gonna learn how to add a hidden magnet into pretty much any functional model that you can think of that builds flat from the bottom up. Obviously you can't make anything a magnet, but we have been trying a lot of different things and I'm gonna talk about it today. So this was much requested from the audience over the last few months. I have been here showing what we've been doing weekly in real time, pushing the limits to these printers and printing as much as we possibly can with models and new filaments all the time. Trying to just show you guys what we're doing, give you guys ideas, help motivate you guys to jump into this hobby because it really is a really fun thing to get into. I I'm not gonna lie, I love it. So now I'm not going to discuss any legalities on whether or not you're allowed to remix models. Y'all are adults and you do you. I'm not here to talk about that stuff. I'm here to show you how you can be creative, how you can innovate things and create new ideas, um, you know, and just test the limits to things you've never seen before. You know, have you seen a gigantic gizmo be a functional print that can hold a bunch of paper on your refrigerator? You know, whatever it is. If you want to make a very niche gift to somebody, if you want to have that competitive edge over somebody that's in your market, you know, whatever the case may be, this is just a good stepping stone to dip your toes into the possibilities of what you can do inside the, the slicer that you choose. You know, we're gonna use bamboo today, but I'm sure you could do this on Orca or anything that you're using at home. Um, you know, I'm sure the terms are quite similar. I'm going to show you exactly the method that we use with our secret little number formula to get the perfect hidden magnet every time. So after this video, you should be able to get the perfect magnet, which we will link in the description below, because trust me, we have tried a lot and there are a lot of shitty ones. I'm sorry, there are a lot of not very good ones. I will leave those linked down below. They are very inexpensive. Grab yourself some of those, grab a pen and a paper maybe, make sure you take some screenshots. I don't know how you guys like to take notes these days. And uh, yeah, let's just get right into the slicer. All right, you guys, here we are inside the Bamboo Lab Slicer. We're going to be using a model by Mad Monkey 3 d on Maker World. This is the Blue Power Ranger. Now, you can scale your models to be as big as you want. We've done multiple sizes where they've had up to, I think one had eight magnets. Um, right now, we are doing the mini chibis. A lot of them, shout out to Vunk and Boxy 3D we've done, and these are just a size that we prefer. So. In order to get a great size for these magnets, what you're gonna do is we highlight the model and we like to make it about six inches, I'm sorry, six squares for his size. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then six up to seven. That's about the size that we normally do for our chibis. Now, when you have him in the right size that you have him scaled to, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and flip the plate over so you're looking at the back of his head and zoom in. Now with him highlighted, you're going to right click your model and go down to add negative part. Maybe yours says add negative space. It could say something different, but this is what mine says. You're gonna go ahead and scroll down to disc. So you're gonna go ahead and put that where you think yeah. you want to place your magnet. You don't want it too far on the left and you don't want it too far on the right. So we've got him placed right here in the middle. Now this is where it took a lot of experimentation to get something like this to work. A lot of times, especially if you're gluing them in, there was just a lot of problems with it not working, not being flush. I'm gonna show you the magic numbers that we use with these specific magnets, and that way it's foolproof and you guys can just take it and run with it. So what we're gonna do is we are going to scale this to fit our magnets that we are using from Amazon. Now, for the size, we're gonna come down here. We're not using the scale, we're using the size. So on your X, you're going to put 8.96. 
on the Y you're going to put 8.96 and then you want to make sure that uniform scale is not checked. If you have it checked, it's going to mess everything up. It's not going to allow you to make the last number you need to be different. So the Z is the one that you want to have different and that one is going to be 2.71. Now once you have that scaled, you are then going to slide your cursor down to the move function. So we're going to click this little button with the four arrows and we are going to rotate the plate sideways so that you can see the magnet on its side and you can see the Z axis. The blue is the Z axis right on top. Now this is definitely going to be difficult if you don't have a mouse, especially a mouse where you can change the sensitivity of something that you're dragging. I use a mouse that makes it so I can get the perfect coloring, the perfect scrolling when it comes to adding things like this. So I definitely recommend if you're having a hard time with this next step, you got to upgrade your mouse. So we're going to go ahead and zoom in, grab that Z line. And now the point of this is see this gray shadow down here. We want it to make, we want this gray shadow to ultimately disappear. And what that means is this negative space is going inside the head. Okay. Now what we want to do is when we're here, we can continue to scroll up a little bit until that ever so slight, see how it's still there, that dark circle ever so slightly, it will disappear. So we're going to go up a little bit more. And now it is your Z is now zeroed in this area. Now that's very important that you do that before this next step, which is then we're going to take this and we're going to move it up to about for us in these models, roughly around 30 is the sweet spot. Um, that's right when you're um, going to have that flush layer go across the magnet. So I'm going to show you what 25 looks like, and then I'll show you what 30 looks like. And you can see what I'm talking about with the difference. And you'll see that once you slice your model. So let's go ahead and put it up to 25 and slice our model and see if what we, and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So 25 looks great. You don't see anything on, on this body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back and I'm going to change this Z line to something shorter. This is going to tell you if it's right or not. So we're going to go ahead that right back up. It's zeroed. Now we're going to go up. Let's do 15 and see what happens. Okay. All right. So you see this ring here, this right here is going to tell you that there is something there. This is going to be your filament and this yellow is going to be that exposed magnet. So you definitely don't want to do that. If that is the case, all you need to do is come back to prepare and just hit the undo button. It's going to bring you back. It's going to bring you back a couple steps. You can even go one step further to bring that gray line back. You're going to bring it back up to that disappearing circle to zero it out and then you're going to bring it up to that magic number. We just do 30. It's worked for us. So that's what I'm going to go with in this slice. Now, after this slice, I'm going to show you one last step and then that's it. You guys were done. What a quick and easy method. Let's go ahead and zoom him out and check him out. Make sure he's good. And he looks great. So now we need to be able to pause him right where that magnet is to make sure that we, uh, you know, could get it in and stuff. So sorry, you guys, I did it backwards. You do want to look at him <laughs> in the front. Okay. So you're going to scroll him all the way down. There we go. You're going to go all the way down until that circle. You see how it turned into a red and yellow perfect circle. That one is not the circle that you want. Neither is that one. Don't let it fool you. That is the circle you want where you can see that indent. Then you're going to right click your little plus sign and add your pause. That is where your pause happens. That is when you drop in your little magnet like so. I just showed you a foolproof way to add magnets to hidden magnets to any model. Now this isn't just to make anything cooler. This is also a safety precaution. It's also to help remove that need of using glue, which can just be annoying, time consuming and even messy. It just looks cleaner also. And it is quite a nice surprise when somebody doesn't even realize that it is not just a little toy. It could actually be a functional magnet. We're on the verge of not just creating tools and functional things for the house. Now we are able to use our imaginations, create new fan art, 
that hasn't even been explored yet. The possibilities are endless and it's only going to get crazier and more awesome as time goes by. Now, if you ever need any ideas, please feel free to check out our weekly vlogs. I will have them linked down below. We have over 30 weeks of showing you guys different models that we've created. I also have a podcast series where I talk to you guys a little bit about our experience as beginners with our current print form. So definitely check that out. I hope that you found this useful. I hope you guys do some creative things now that you know how to do this. What is it that you want to do first? What are your plans? Let me know in the comments. We appreciate all of you. Feel free to give us a thumbs up, share with your friends, give us a subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Jin and this is Hamill's House of 3D Prints. And today we are doing a low, today we are doing the ever so, today we are doing the Today the at l <laughs> today 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 at last the long awaited magnet tutorial has I'm not saying that. What's up everybody? Welcome. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to redo this whole thing.